So if I give so if I give money to Rupert's kids, what does the money go for? You know, uh, in our program, 100% of the donation goes directly to the program. Uh, our social workers pay, our mentors pay, our participants pay. Um, that is our biggest of our expenses. We have to be able to pay even our participants a minimum wage when they start after their first volunteer two weeks because they come in and don't get paid. They get uh, transportation and food for the first two weeks and volunteer and show that they're willing to give of themselves. After they get through that, then they start going on the payroll and they get paid minimum wage to learn how to go to work. Even before they're worth minimum wage, we pay minimum wage. Uh, just like our mentors and our social workers, we've got to have that payroll and we've got to have those dollars coming in. The donations always go, also go to uh, helping us create the ability to go to work with buying the fuel and keeping the trailer and the trucks running, keeping the equipment going so we can go out and earn those dollars, cutting the medians, earn those dollars working on these properties. So we can offset our payroll by the dollars earned. So you go out and you work for a project for the city of Indianapolis. You and the guys provide services. The city or the contractor pays you for those services. That money goes to the administration. The donations then go to buying equipment to the guy's needs. Is that correct? There, uh, honestly, right now our administration costs are almost nil. And the administration is involved in the program also. The only people that get paid in our program are the people that are doing direct care for the clients, for our participants. That's why I can say, without a doubt, 100% of the dollars donated from the community go directly back into teaching our young men and women how to create that, that life for themselves. How to go fishing. We don't stand there and give people money. We stand there and say, if you want to help yourself, we'll show you how to do it. Come on with us. Dollars just given to somebody are not going to teach what dollars earned teach. So what are some of the, what is the equipment that you have to buy that the guys use? What are the capital things that you need <coughs> to keep the program running? You know, our day-to-day -day expenses, it doesn't seem like much, but as, you know, the fuel costs rise, as um, maintenance on our equipment rises as these costs rise the things we spend our money on besides payroll we've been known to go shopping and, and keep food in stock and spend fifty to a hundred dollars a week just keeping food on hand for some of our participants when I know they haven't eaten in a day or two we have to buy probably a hundred dollars seventy five to a hundred dollars worth of fuel a day when we're mowing these medians. We're traveling four corners of Marion County, driving, gosh, hundreds of miles, cutting these medians. The mowers all take the fuel. And I'm able to teach with Henthorns, the landscape shop, teach lawn maintenance and the small engine repair. But we've got to buy all those parts too. One little part we bought the other day for the mower, it was just a little cog. $85. Doesn't sound like much, but when you're buying one or two parts every week, when you're buying $50, $75, $100 dollars in fuel, when you're buying $20, $30, $40 in, few, in food, your expenses start adding up. And just the sundries, just the extras, can be four, five, six hundred dollars $600 a week. You know, one of, the, uh, one of the other expenses in our mentoring program, 
when the system, the way it's set up, puts people out on the street or in these work release programs on detention or uh, electronic monitoring, the electronic monitor costs you $85 a week. Then you have to have the home phone. Then you have to have all these other things. And you have to have the address where with our participants that have never made a legal dollar in their life and you're putting them out on the streets with a hundred dollars a week being accrued and you let them go four, five, six, seven, eight weeks and then you look at them and say if you don't get that thousand dollars paid off by the end of the week you're going back to jail What would that do to uh, a young person's mind who has never made a thousand dollars legally in their life? What kind of situation would you start thinking about if you were put in, in, in that position? Um, the only way that these young men and women have to make any money is usually illegal. One of the things that we do is try and help create that payroll for them to be paying. But a lot of times they come to us with, you know, hundreds or thousands of dollars already in debt to the courts, all for probation. If we don't help uh, offset some of those costs, if we don't show that we're willing to write that check for $1,000 and then you slowly pay us back with the work that you do, we would have a situation where, you know, one of our participants might actually uh, consider breaking the law to get that $1,000. I've watched many times um, probation, uh, clients in the system walk in to the probation department and pay with tens and twenties, pay hundreds, sometimes thousands of dollars. Where do you think they're making that? For someone that has never made a legal dollar in their life, um, that is the system setting you up to fail. One of the things that we do with our dollars is we will help pay some of those court costs, but then gently have the guys paying it back, have the men and women actually paying their own way, but not expecting them to go out and do it all at once, and not telling them if they can't do it, they go to jail. Those dollars that you're giving to our program, we don't just give them away. We do use those to help support and protect our clients from the system. When the system is telling you you come up with a thousand dollars by the end of the week or the month or you're going to jail, I will start working these young men and women, working these participants uh, even more on off days. Like tomorrow I'm going to be in here on Sunday working with one of our participants that needs to learn how to drive and another one that needs more hours on their paycheck. There's ways to make it so that our children are, even though there are some in their 20s, they're still children. There's ways to make it so that our clients do not fail while still teaching them how to take care of themselves and how to take care of their responsibilities. Being able to do that, being able to show the community is helping us protect uh, the participants from a system that is set up to just keep the participants in the system. It doesn't work. We've got to let these kids get out of the system and learn how to go take, the, take care of themselves. Learn how to go to work. Learn how to have that sense of self-worth and work ethic. You're not going to do that by verbally abusing someone, by giving them the freedom to incur a thousand dollars worth of debt and then giving them a ultimatum that if they can't pay it within a matter of days they go to jail that's a bad scenario that is uh, setting up for failure that's not what we do
in our mentoring program with the dollars that we get from the community, with the dollars that we make from our work. We use that to teach our participants how to pay their bills. When the system says, if you don't pay for your anklet, for your detention, for your probation, you're going back to jail, um, I don't know that the people that are saying that really understand what they're doing. When you've never made a legal living, when you've never been given that opportunity, how are you supposed to go out and do it when you're under the, under the gun, when you're under the thumb of the detention center? Giving dollars to us gives us that ability to help teach in a positive way, how you pay your bills, how you take care of yourself, and how you get yourself out of the system. What is the best way that folks can donate? Are you looking for material donations, gift cards, or is cash and credit card donations really the best way to contribute? You know, we've for, gosh, 20 years been accepting donations. We are standing on the shoulders of our community because of the donations that we've been giving. The best way, honestly, to be involved with Rupert's Kids is to look and see what we need. We need food, fuel, supplies, clothing, all those things that you need in your day-to-day -day life. Those are the things that these guys, these men and women, do not have. Fuel cards, food cards. Walmart or, you know, Costco, Sam's Club. The food cards and the fuel cards and the, the box store cards. Being able to go out, you know, I'm, I'm going to take some, uh, some participants on a driving tomorrow to Aldi's. If we had some Aldi's cards, that would be great. If we had some Kroger's cards, that would be great. That's one way. Another way, look at our website. Get on our website. Heck, you're already here. Come find the donate button. Hit that donate button and give. Um, a few hundred dollars a month can change a kid's life. Or a few thousand dollars a month putting them into the system and teaching them how to be a career criminal. I don't think there's any choice. I'd rather empower our community. And the best way to do that? Donating money, donating items. If you look in your house and you realize how many towels, sheets, washcloths, how many plates, napkins, cups, silverware, how much stuff you have, we have young men and women showing up on our doorstep with nothing um, almost every day. We get donations of, of household items and I just open a box up, I'll lay it out on the table and within 10 minutes um, we've got people boxing them up and, and stocking their own kitchens, taking them home because they're tired of using plastic forks and knives. Um, they don't want to just keep throwing away their paper plate. They actually want to have real plates. They want to have a more than just a towel in their house. The way you help Rupert's kids, gift cards are always good. Cash donations are always good. Giving of yourself and your time. Showing up at our office on our volunteer meeting night. That is a very good way. Being involved. The only reason that we've been able to make it 20 plus years in the, in the community here in Indianapolis is because of you guys.
It's the donations that you give that help keep our program going.